Meanwhile, Hightail is charging through the streets of Brooklyn, dragging Miles behind her. But he manages to twist out of her grasp, firing webbing to try and slow the speedster down. I'm gonna rip your throat out, boy! She snarls, and they stop briefly as she throws rapid-fire kicks and punches at him. I know you're still in there, Hightail! He uses his webbing to soften her blows, and he twists under her attacks, believing that her super sped-up metabolism might be able to push the vampire infection out of her system if he can distract her long enough. But you're probably wondering how Miles got here. There's a gang war brewing in the Spider-Man comics, and all of the Spider-Man-related books are being brought in. But what could be so interesting as to drag Miles into this? Well, the return of the Prowler, of course. Today we're going to be covering issues 12 to 16. Issue 12 actually resolves the vampire plot from before, and then it goes into the gang war. I'm just making sure that we cover all of the Miles' issues for you guys. This is Comic Storian. I take comic books, turn them into audio drama so that you can keep up with your favorite plots, including Miles Morales and the return of Prowler. But first, let's wrap up that vampire plot line so we can go into that. The newly created vampire Hightail rushes at Miles at super speed, bearing her fangs. I told you I'd find you, Arnito, and I always keep my word, she hisses, but Blade is there using a relic that saps the power over her for a moment. Not tonight, sucker, Blade snaps. Hightail hisses, retreating back to the side of her vampire god. Ramir smiles at the trio of vampire hunters. How glorious. A creature of such potential. What grand plans I shall make. She will be my herald of death. Her speed will allow me unfathomable reach. I will become a whole once again. He rumbles and Blade draws his swords moving forward, ignoring Miles' calls for him not to kill anyone. I can talk to her! I can save her! Miles shouts, but in a blur of motion, he's gone. Miles! Brielle shouts, but she turns to Ramir, and his army of vampires charges at them. You have bigger things to worry about, he hisses at her. Blade and Brielle leap into the fight, their swords flashing as they cut through the charging vampires. Blade dips under an attack and slices Ramir across the ribs, whirling around as the blood begins to flow out of the vampire. But the wound heals just as quickly, and the vampire god smiles. Cut, hack, stab, and slash as much as you'd like. The wounds heal and flesh returns. Can the same be said about you, Daywalker? Meanwhile, Hightail is charging through the streets of Brooklyn, dragging Miles behind her. But he manages to twist out of her grasp, firing webbing to try and slow the speedster down. I'm gonna rip your throat out, boy! She snarls, and they stop briefly as she throws rapid-fire kicks and punches at him. I know you're still in there, Hightail! He uses his webbing to soften her blows, and he twists under her attacks, believing that her super sped-up metabolism might be able to push the vampire infection out of her system if he can distract her long enough. As she turns, seeing a Halloween celebration taking place down the street. Well, would you look at that? Looks like we found an energy buffet! She says as she dashes forward, but Miles manages to wrap his webbing around her, forcing her arms to her sides. Miss Hightail, uh, we weren't done talking. I got a few points about why you shouldn't hurt these people. Reason number one is you shouldn't be a vampire menace, he jokes. But even with her arms pinned to her side, Hightail is still too fast, beginning to run into the crowd and quickly bite people. Miles leaps up, tying up the group of newly formed vampires before they can do any damage. As Hightail then tries to dash away, Miles webs his feet to the ground, trying to slow her down. Finally, he calls her out for running away pointing out that maybe she isn't built to throw hands. Hightail whirls and rushes back at him, easily dodging out of the way of Miles' attacks. You think you can hit me? Who needs these losers when I've got a living battery right here? She says as she appears behind him, prepared to bite into his neck. But Miles hits himself with his own venom blast, sending a shock of electricity through his body and into hers. Hightail screams in pain, falling to the ground. What? What the hell happened? She gasps, momentarily pushing Ramir's presence out of her mind. Miles tries to talk her through it, but the vampire's control quickly returns. I'll bring him your head, she snarls, but Miles hits her with another blast of venom, throwing her to the ground, knocking her unconscious this time. Meanwhile, Blade and Brielle continue to fight against Ramir's forces, but with the god so close, the vampires quickly heal and return to the fight. Blade charges at the vampire god, ignoring his wounds as he slashes and stabs at the monster. He slams him into a wall, peppering him with silver sticks, but Ramir quickly pushes through them, his body quickly healing. 
I am Ramir, the immortal! The monster bellows. Blade slashes through one of the vampires, throwing his sword, and he stabs into Ramir's head. But the monster isn't phased. I won't kill you, Daywalker. I'll start with your kin. Maybe I'll turn them and have them be my cup bearer. That play, it sounds a little whack to me. Miles says as he swings back into the fight, kicking Ramir in the head, knocking him away. Miles then leaps down, helping his friend to her feet. You good? And Brielle rubs her wounds. Head's going to be ringing for a week, but yeah. Blade charges over to them, taking out the relic that will seal him away forever. Keep him busy long enough for me to seal his ass away for good. Blade orders the young vampire hunters. Ramir rises out of the rubble of the building that Miles kicked him into. Daywalker, I grow tired of this, he growls. But Miles and Brielle leap into battle with the monster as Blade begins to work the spell. Maybe a big sleepy vampire king needs to take a nap. Brielle shouts as she stabs her sword into his back. With that moment, Miles webs up his arms and punches him in the face. Finally, Blade finishes the spell, and the vampire god is sucked into the relic, disappearing in a flash of light. No! He screams as he disappears. With the smoke clearing, Blade is holding the relic. Got you, he whispers. Miles looks around, glad to see all that Romeo turned has become human once again. He then looks at Blade, who stuffs the relic into his coat. You just gonna keep that thing in your jacket all loose? He wonders, but Blade shakes his head. No, I got a special place for this, away from prying eyes. Later, Blade drives Miles back to his neighborhood, promising Brielle that he will always be there for her. They then look in the back seat, surprised that Miles passed out from exhaustion. I guess all those venom blast things really took it out of him, Brielle notes. With that, Miles will need his rest, because New York City is about to become a war zone for the crime lords. And the one who has his eyes on Brooklyn, an old villain of Miles, the Hobgoblin. As gang war has set New York ablaze, Miles Morales has joined Spider-Man's team to fight against the criminal armies throughout the city. But various boroughs were all under siege, and Miles rushed to help the people of Brooklyn. Now he swings through the streets and is shocked as he runs straight into a snowstorm. Snow? This time of year? And only on this block? Something tells me my day is about to get very long. Miles sighs, rounding a corner to find a costumed army duking it out on the street. You gotta be kidding me. These guys? Miles shouts as he finds the Buzz Boys, led by Bumbler and Warring Wasp and the Frost Pharaoh fighting in the streets. Blast from the Buzz Boys' laser guns and Frost Pharaohs rip across the streets, forcing the civilians to run and dodge. A little girl falls into the icy street, so Miles swings down to give her a hand. You idiots are going to get somebody killed! Spidey shouts as he pulls the girl to safety, passing her off to her father. A Buzz Boy grenade then flies through the air, but Miles whirls around, webbing it up, throwing it high into the air where it can detonate with minimum damage. What the hell? You get our new gear, Bumbler? We're not trying to nuke the whole block! One of the Buzz Boys shouts to the leader. Miles leaps down into the Buzz Boys, knocking them out quickly as he whirls around them and pulls their weapons and gear out of their hands. More of the Buzz Boys then rush forward, led by Bumbler. I got some new tricks up my sleeve, Spider-Man! The Bumbler shouts as the criminals raise their new weapons. Miles nods and creates his Venom Sword. Dang, you're not going to believe this, but you're not the only one who's gotten an upgrade. Miles jokes, charging forward, dodging under the Buzz Boy's energy blast, slashing through their new rifles. Shoot them, you idiots! Bumbler shouts, but the warring wasp flies forward, rushing Miles. Let me handle this, she shouts, so Miles whirls back on her. Oh no! Will the D-lister whose name I just didn't bother to learn be the one to take me out? He jokes as he simply dodges her attack, allowing her to fly straight into the Bumbler. Dang! Guess not! Miles laughs, the two D-list villains gathering themselves and charging at Spider-Man. We can do this! We're the Buzz Boys! They shout, but Miles nimbly dodges their attacks, drawing out his Venom Sword, slashing through their wings, sending them both plummeting to the ground. Yeah, well, I'm Spider-Man, he says, and then Miles quickly webs them up to the nearby dumpster and turns back to the storm. That takes care of the bees, now to just find out where... Where did Frost Pharaoh go? He says, and his eyes widen as he looks up at Frost Pharaoh's giant Egyptian mecha that seems to have come out of nowhere. Where did he get a Gundam? Miles wonders. The giant mech fires an ice blast at Miles, forcing him to leap into the air and swing around to dodge the attack. He flies through the air, drawing his venom sword and going for the mech's head. 
Frost, my man, let's talk this out, Miles yells. But the Pharaoh fires another ice blast that sends Miles flying, freezing his web shooters in the process. No more running, Spider. I'm going to end this, the Pharaoh shouts as the mech charges forward. I can't hear you down there. Have you tried unplugging and plugging back in your mech? Miles shouts over the storm, and below them there's a screech of towers as Misty Knight brings her muscle car to a screeching stop, which sends Colleen Wing flying towards the mech with her swords. All I'm asking is for one week to go by where I don't have to save your butt, Spider-Man! Misty shouts as she fires her gun. Colleen leaps into the fight and Misty grabs Miles, pulling him to the safety behind her car. Colleen then stabs one of her swords through the mech's armor, but a powerful arm swings out, knocking her away. The Frost Pharaoh laughs over his radio. First, I'll crush the Brooklyn Spider-Man and his sidekicks, and then I'll turn the whole borough into the first lands of my dynasty. He laughs, but Missy and Colleen stand up in anger. Sidekicks! They both shout. Miles' web shooters have thought out, and he has a plan. He leaps back into the fight, shooting the webs into the mech's eyes, blinding it. And after that, he swings around, reaching for Colleen's sword. No, don't do that! The Pharaoh shouts, but Miles shakes his head as he grabs the metal. Sorry, I can't hear you. This venom blast is just too dang loud. Miles says as he sends a blast of energy through the sword and into the mech, destroying it in one blast. Moments later, the three heroes pull themselves from the debris of the destroyed mech and snowstorm. Man, I have snow in places I didn't even know existed. He groans, but a voice calls out to him. If you need a warm place to warm up, Arenito. Might I suggest the back of a squad car? Hytale asks as she, Scorpion, and Gus walk through the destruction. The Kate Killers are here to help clean up the city, though Hytale isn't sure if she should just bring in Spider-Man now. Miles puts up his hands trying to hold off another fight with the Vigilante Squad. Now is not the time to be tied up with beef from the past, because the way I see it, we're going to need all the help we can get, he tells her. Unknown to them, the Hobgoblin is moving through the burrow. He holds a briefcase of money and is offering a partnership to a shadowy figure. I need you to help me with a little spider problem, Hobgoblin says with a vicious smile. The Prowler leans forward at nodding. I'm something of a spider expert myself. While the gang war rages throughout New York City, the enforcers have arrived at the mysterious warehouse somewhere in Brooklyn. The trio marvel at the text scattered around the workstations until a shadowy figure finally speaks to them. Sirius digs for serious work, and Sirius is something the Enforcers haven't been taken in in a while, Montana. This can change things. Prowler says as he steps out of the shadows, holding a high-tech briefcase. Montana spits onto the floor, pointing out that the promise of high-tech weapons to help the Hobgoblin sounds too good to be true. If Hobgoblin figures that we're so useless, then why does he see fit to bring us in? Montana asks, and Ox nods, pointing out that they could just carve their own piece in New York. They all whirl around in surprise as the Hobgoblin swoops in on his glider, laughing maniacally. If you'd like to make a play, fellas, there's no time like the present, Hobgoblin hisses. Prowler nods up at his boss. Good deal's a good deal. Why don't you take a look before making a decision? Might play out better for you, Prowler says. So Montana looks in the case and marvels at the weapons. He glances up at Prowler, accepting the deal. What do you want in exchange? He asks. Prowler narrows his eyes at the enforcers. That's easy. Kill Spider-Man. Meanwhile, over in Brooklyn, Miles just defeated the Frost Pharaoh and Bumbler with the aid of Misty Knight and Colleen Wing. But the arrival of Agent Gao's Cape Killer Squad has caused a bit of an issue. You know, one of these days, we're gonna have to talk things out, Miles says to Hytale. But she shakes her head and orders them to stand down, explaining that Agent Gao doesn't care about the gang war and wants the vigilantes brought in. So you're the one I gotta talk some sense into, Misty says as she steps up to Hytale. But the speedster moves, punching her in the face. A freaking speedster? I hate speedsters! Colleen shouts, drawing her sword. But before she can attack, a powerful gust of wind knocks her off her feet. Miles moves quickly, leaping out of the range of Scorpion's tail attack. Guess it's just you and me again, kid. Real shame, because it ain't personal, Scorpion says. So Miles leaps over another blow, firing a web blast into Scorpion's face. Scorp, man, we had a whole team up against Carnage. Don't do me like this, Miles shouts out. Gus continues hitting the area with wind blasts, but she doesn't have perfect control of her powers, sending Hytale to the ground. 
Gao should have kept you in the slammer instead of saddling you with us, Hightail snaps. But the wind dies down as Colleen comes up from behind the super criminal, knocking her across the back of the head with her sword, dropping her to the ground. While Spider-Man continues to fight against Scorpion, Colleen and Misty are knocked against a nearby car, with Hightail moving fast, cuffing them both before they realize what's happened. Damn it! We're not the bad guys! Misty shouts as she stares down at the cuffs. Now all alone, the rest of the cape killers surround Spider-Man. Looks like you're all alone, Hightail says with a smile. Meanwhile, Miles' girlfriend, Starling, has been sent out by Miles to recruit more heroes to help. She slips inside of an old warehouse to find a massive creature wearing Miles' costume. Don't tell me you're the guy I'm looking for, right? Shift? She asks, and he nods. Glurp! He mutters. Starling shrugs. Come on, we gotta make one more stop. Back at Hobgoblin's warehouse, the criminal is watching the growing tensions and warfare throughout the city. Seeing the heroes are stretched too thin, he turns back to Prowler and the enforcers, telling them to head out into the city. I want to give her as much time as possible to perfect her prototypes, because once these designs are complete, the city is as good as mine. Prowler nods, flexing his new claws. You heard the man. Time for a field test, he says to the enforcers. Back in Brooklyn, Miles is slammed hard against a car. No hard feelings, kid, Scorpion says as he stalks forward, but they're stopped by Hightail's phone. Looks like the boss wants a check-in, she says, tapping the phone and a hologram of Agent Gao appears. The agent glares at Miles, telling him that she is finally arresting him. But Miles gets his own call from Peter Parker, Spider-Man, and he taps a button to take it. Yeah, I hate to interrupt, but we're kind of in the middle of saving the city, Spidey tries to tell Miles. Try telling the cape killers that! They're about to arrest me! Miles points out. So, Peter Parker shrugs, putting She-Hulk on the line. Everyone stands by while She-Hulk and Agent Gao begin to argue, with She-Hulk pointing out that Miles has been deputized by the mayor of the city to help stop the gang war taking place. Finally, Agent Gao relents, ordering Miles to fight alongside the Cape Killers, since they've gotten reports of the Hobgoblin working in Brooklyn, and she's going to be taking Wing and Knight in. Miles tries to argue, but Misty waves him away. Don't worry about us, kid. We'll be out in no time. She says that she's put in the back of a police van. Scorpion is then put in charge of the team while Hightail brings Misty and Colleen in. I'll be back, Spider-Man. Don't you worry. Hey, Gargan, try not to mess this up. Hightail shouts as she dashes away. The new team of Scorpion, Gust, and Spider-Man head off into Brooklyn to help stop the gang war, but it only takes a few blocks before they're attacked from above. Miles looks up in shock to see the enforcers now led by Prowler. Guess you ain't lost your edge, Spider-Man. Prowler says as he leaps down at his nephew. Miles tries to dive out of the way of the attack, kicking his uncle, demanding to know why he's taken the role of Prowler again. It's complicated. Prowler snaps as he whirls around, tossing several pumpkin bombs, but Miles webs them, tossing them back. Don't tell me you're working for Hobgoblin. This is low even for you. Trust me, it's going to be good for us in the end. Meanwhile, Scorpion and Gust are staring down the enforcers. Ha! These guys are jobbers, jobber! Scorpion laughs, and the group launches into a fight with each of them, with Gust taking out Fancy Dan before Ox grabs her by the head, beginning to squeeze. But Scorpion is there, knocking him away with a blast from his tail. Montana then prepares to draw on Gargan, but when he pulls out his pistol, Scorpion shoots it out of his hand, destroying it. And in moments, the enforcers are all unconscious on the ground. Scorpion nudges Gust and smiles. Like I said, a jobber's jobber, he says with a smile. Meanwhile, Miles has drawn his Venom Blade and is slashing at Prowler, but his uncle blocks the blow with his new tech gauntlet. Where did you get the tech? What's going on? Why are you doing this? Miles begins to shout, but Prowler pushes Miles away, trying to make his escape. Spider-Man follows him, demanding to know why he lied to everyone about being done with Prowler. Just listen, Prowler begins to say, but he's knocked off his feet by Gus's appearance. I've had about enough of you, Prowler says, firing a blast that knocks Gus to the ground. You're gonna pay for that, Scorpion says, whipping another blast out of his tail, but Prowler dodges it, punching him across the face. He then whirls back on Spider-Man, who is leaping at him with the Venom Sword. Really doesn't have to be this way, nephew, Prowler growls, but Miles shakes his head and prepares to continue fighting. I'm not gonna let you or Hobgoblin take Brooklyn. If I'm the last hero here, I'm gonna stop you. But Miles isn't alone as a voice calls out from the nearby rooftops. Brooklyn might be tapped out, but I hear Jersey's still got a few heavy hitters. Miss Marvel says as she, Starling, and Shift are now joining the fight. In Brooklyn, Hobgoblin and Rabble begin to chase down a former scientist from beyond. 
The scientist has his security drones, but they're no longer listening to him, refusing to shoot Hobgoblin. Why aren't you listening to me, you useless pieces of junk? The scientist snaps as he tries to get through the security door into the warehouse. It's because machines only like to share their minds with people they respect, Rabble says, as she and Hobgoblin appear behind the scientist. The drones are now fully under Rabble's control. Looks like you made a new friend. Real shame, Hobgoblin says with a smile. Rabble steps forward, demanding that the scientist give them the drive that they want. I can't do that. Maxine will have me killed, the man shouts, but Rabble glares at him, the drones hovering dangerously close to his face. So will I, she tells him, ordering the drones to aim. The drones move quickly with Rabble retrieving the drive from the man's body. She plugs it into the system and motions to the hologram that appears before them. This will allow you to track Queen Goblin. Beyond saw her as a weapon, so they're tracking their IP. Rabble tells Hobgoblin, asking why he wants the Queen Goblin anyway. Let's just say, you aren't the only one with cloudy thoughts. Since you helped me, I'll keep my end of the bargain. Hobgoblin says as they fly away from the facility, allowing Beyond drones to explode behind them. But elsewhere, we get back to the Prowler, who's currently under attack from his nephew's friends. As he tries to avoid attacks from Miss Marvel, Shift, Starling, and Spider-Man himself, he tries desperately to reason with them. Damn it, stop for one second and let me talk, Uncle Aaron snaps. But Miles slams into him, slashing through his new tech with the Venom Saber, pushing Aaron against the wall. There! Go on! Talk! Miles snaps. Aaron reaches up, pulling off the Prowler mask, explaining the truth to his nephew. That he's undercover to try and stop Hobgoblin. I'm good, but I ain't taking on four supers at the same time good. I needed to put on a show while you took out the Enforcers. Aaron says, explaining that he was approached by the new Hornet, Hobie Brown, who was the original Prowler. Hobie asked Aaron to take up the mantle of Prowler again so that he could get close to the Hobgoblin and figure out what the criminal's plan for Brooklyn was. So I made a promise. I linked up with Hobgoblin to see what he was about. Found out that he's got some weapons designer, Rabble. She's young and unhinged with unstable powers. Says that she's there because Hobgoblin said that he could help her with them. But I think there's more, Aaron tells him. Miles stares at his uncle for a moment, his friends gathering at his back, and finally he nods. Okay, we're going to stop Hobgoblin and Rabble, because if I don't put a stop to these guys, there's no telling what trouble they'll get into, Miles tells him. Back at their base, Rabble is struggling to fix the tech that Hobgoblin has given her. Her powers have been cloudy since their fight with Spider-Man, and the drones aren't fully listening. She begins to grow angry, shouting at the drones, trying to force them. Easy, Rabble. Hobgoblin says to her from the shadows, but she just grows more angry, her eyes beginning to spark as she shouts at the drones, forcing them to listen. Finally, they do, and the power armor begins to put itself back together. Hobgoblin comes forward, putting a hand on her shoulders. You got some spirit in you, girl. I'm going to show you exactly what those gifts of yours can do. Nearby, Spider-Man and the team are moving through Brooklyn, heading towards the Hobgoblin's base, now teamed up with Gust and Scorpion from the Cape Killers to help take out the criminal and his allies. Landing on the nearby roof, Miles surveys the building. It's like Onk said, Hobbs got guards outside, but inside it's just him and Rabble. Aaron then comes up behind him, bringing up a 3D version of the warehouse. Didn't have much time to map everything, but better than going in blind, he says, and Miles nods as he looks at the map. Once we're in, you can lead us to Hobgoblin's weapon, but it's not going to be easy, Miles says. Miss Marvel motions to the warehouse below them and the five super criminals standing guard. But Miles thinks that if Scorpion, Starling, and Shift can distract the guards outside, the rest will have an easier time slipping into the warehouse. Of course we have to do the hard-ass job, Scorpion grunts, and with that, the stealthy team moves away, with Miles wishing his friends good luck. Your boyfriend's really annoying, kid, Scorpion says to Starling. She raises an eyebrow. No comment, she says quietly, and with that, the loud team leaps down at the villains below. Can't believe we have to deal with these Z-listers! Scorpion snaps as he slams into Manbolt. Shift then begins to move, but is hit by a blast from Shocker. Um, did Spider-Man get stung by bees? Lady Stiltman asks. Starling helps Shift get to his feet, and that's when Scorpion stands over them. Get your head in the game, kids! Time to earn our pay! Max snaps at him. Inside, the rest of the team is sneaking through the hallways, with Aaron ducking out in hopes that he can get the drop on Hobgoblin. 
Aaron looks at Gust and asks her to hang back just in case Miles and Kamala need backup. Alone for a moment, Miles suddenly turns, hugging Kamala. I'm so glad you're back, Calm. I thought... He whispers, glad that his friend is actually alive after her supposed death. She smiles at him. Aw, I'm glad I'm back too. But how about we do the real tearful reunion after we stop the baddie? They continue forward with Miles holding up a hand to stop Kamala. What are you doing? She asks quietly. Miles tells her that he's working on expanding his spider sense, but he needs to concentrate. So he pushes out his senses and suddenly gets a hit. He then turns, leaping back at his friend. Miss Marvel! He shouts as he knocks her out of the way of a drone attack. What are these things? Kamala asks as she slams into another drone. Another blast takes out the hallway, and the two heroes struggle out of the rubble. They both look up to see Hobgoblin and Rabble, now in new goblin-like armor, hovering over them. Spider-Man and Miss Marvel breaking into my base. Guess me and my new friend here will have to show you a warm welcome. Hobgoblin shouts as his laughter echoes throughout the warehouse. Miles struggles to his feet as Gus rushes in to help her new friends. Gus, Miss Marvel, behind me now! Miles shouts, and Rabble glares down at Spider-Man. He's mine! Miles looking up at her, powering up his Venom sword. Bring it, Rabble! Still mad about not getting into school? Miles asks her. She leaps at him with her own energy sword, and the two begin to clash. But Gust and Miss Marvel are there, knocking Rabble out of the air, slamming her into the ground. The villain jumps to her feet, two energy blades in her hands. If you want to stand between me and Spider-Man, then I'll cut you down as well! She hisses at him. And with a moment to breathe, Miles leaps at the Hobgoblin, slamming into him, hitting him again and again, bringing him down. <laughs> yes! This is the spider I wanted to face. What do you say we field test some new toys? Goblin shouts, and drones suddenly buzz around the room, firing energy beams that Miles can barely leap and twist around. Her drones are everywhere! Gust shouts as the drones buzz around all of the heroes. You should know by now, we're never alone! Rabble shouts as Spider-Man, while outside, Scorpion and the others continue to fight against Hobgoblin's criminal guards. But the three heroes don't prove strong enough to fight the six villains, and they're backed into a corner. But that's when Mac Gargan suddenly has an idea. As Shocker is preparing to hit him with a powerful blast, Gargan throws up his hands. Hold on a minute! He shouts, and Shocker pauses the attack. What are you doing? He asks. But Scorpion suggests that the criminals join him and his team. The rest of the criminals gather behind Shocker, who is shocked by this turn of events. Are you serious? Have you lost your mind, Mac? He asks, and Gargan just looks at him. Think about it. When's the last time a goblin, pick any color, has actually followed through with their promises? He asks. And then he suggests that they turn on Hobgoblin before he betrays them, offering to let them join the Cape Killers for this moment and have their records wiped clean. Scorpion shrugs, looking back at the rest of his group in question. Inside, Spidey, Gust, and Miss Marvel are desperately trying to hold their own against an army of drones that are buzzing around them. This is getting out of hand, Rabble! Miles shouts as he knocks another out of the air, but he whirls quickly as Rabble leaps at him, their energy blades meeting, sparking in combat. We have unfinished business, she shouts, and Miles tries to reason with her, that he understands that she is mad, and she feels like she was wronged, but he wants to help her. She hits him with a drone from the side, staggering. I don't want your help! I just want you to die! She bellows as she slams into him, knocking him across the warehouse. Meanwhile, Kamala Khan is trying to catch Hobgoblin, who is buzzing around her. Stay still! She shouts as she slams her fist into the ground, but Hobgoblin laughs at her. Come on now! The chase is the fun part. <laughs> he whirls, throwing a pumpkin bomb at the ceiling, bringing it down on top of Kamala and Gust. But Spidey is there, shooting webs, grabbing the rubble. Miles leaps up trying to catch Hobgoblin, but he's met by a new swarm of Goblin drones. Goblin drones shows these kinds of folks what happens when you piss off a real death dealer. Hobgoblin orders, using Rabble's tech to control the drones. The drones swirl around the room, attacking the heroes who are barely able to fight back. Gus is barely able to keep it together while Spidey leaps to protect her, and that's when an explosion throws them both to the ground. The smoke clears as Hobgoblin is standing over the young heroes, his eyes glowing as he smiles broadly at them. Kamala cradling Gus's head. She's out cold, Spider-Man. We gotta get her some help, Kamala whispers, and Miles nods as Hobgoblin hovers towards them. 
Gonna miss doing this, Spider-Man. You were a pain in the ass, but I respected you. Hobgoblin sneers, motioning to his drones and ordering them to attack. Miles prepares himself, calling forth his Venom Blade, the wall behind them suddenly exploding inward and Scorpion charges in with his team of criminals! That's right, folks! Daddy Gargan is here to save the day! Scorpion shouts and Starling sighs as she swoops through the air. We all agreed you wouldn't say that! As the new team leaps into the fight, they quickly begin to take the drones out. Get what you pay for, I guess! Rabble, some help would be nice! Hobgoblin shouts, but Rabble is already moving. She grabs a hold of the tech she was promised and using her drones, flies to the exit. You served your purpose, Hobgoblin. There's nothing more I can learn from you. Not a mask thanks you for your resources, and I'll be sure to put them to actual use. Rabble shouts over her shoulder. Anger bubbles up inside of Hobgoblin as he realizes that he was just betrayed in this gang war, and he begins to scream at her, shouting that he'll bury Mask and the rest of the scum that have betrayed him. A web shoots out, hitting his back, allowing Miles to yank him off his glider and kick him in the stomach. Dang, Hobgoblin! Starting to think you might be a kind of trash boss. Miles says as he slams the goblin into the ground. Hobgoblin wheezes from broken ribs as he crawls across the rubble shroud on the floor, and Miles stands over him. You're beat, bro. Just give up. Don't think you got many more ribs left for me to break. Hobgoblin rolls over and pulls out two pumpkin bombs. What makes you think I won't take the ship down with me? Spider-Man looks around and realizes that he is surrounded by boxes of pumpkin bombs. He whirls, moving quickly, shouting for the others to escape. And as the heroes and criminals escape the building, Hobgoblin smiles. Don't worry. I'll be seeing you real soon, kid. He whispers to himself before the building explodes. Later, the emergency services have arrived to put out the fires. Miles stands by as the EMTs wheel Gust away. Can't wait to tell my mom I saved the day with Spider-Man. She whispers, giving him a thumbs up. What are you talking about? I'm just trying to be like you. Miles tells her softly. But his comms buzz and it's Peter Parker coming over the lines, telling Miles that Madame Mask and Beatles armies are meeting in the Central Park to end the gang war. And he needs Miles' assistance. Miles turns to leave, but finds Agent Gao waiting for him. We took care of our part of the deal. So now that Brooklyn is safe, your truce with the Cape Killers is over. Gao says as their men are closing in. Gonna have to do this later, Gao. Spider-Man needs me. Spidey says as he swings away, but Starling and Shift step in the way of Gao and her men to prevent them from chasing him. We got this, Spider-Man. Go do your thing. Miles thanks her, leaping to swing away, heading off to help his friends. And that concludes Miles' little side journey with Prowler, Hobgoblin, and Rabble during the Gang War. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up with the adventures of Miles Morales as they're happening. And I'll see you next time right here.